that's a very good question why why um if if god is a good god uh the all the, the good people seem to be suffering and the wicked people seem to be thriving uh or good people are experiencing you know negative consequences or they get sick and you know the people who are are uh, not so good uh seem to have it really good uh they'll have i guess they'll have the money they have these, these different things that that is a very good question in fact um the the the, the psalmist actually asked that question in psalm 73 and i like to go back to what uh the the psalmist said and the psalmist said um you know at some point he sat down and reflected on those things and they were vexing to his spirit these, these were difficult things and they are difficult to me as well sometimes i find myself asking those questions uh but um i think the important thing to know is first of all that um the evil that we experience or the the pain that we experience in our world is a short part of eternity and here's the thing those people that we think are, are let are let off the hook even if they lived 100 years that's a very short time when you think of eternity in terms of the consequences that will come upon them but that having been said i think it's also important for us to recognize like the psalmist that god is not lost on this thing that god actually does understand and in his own system of justice uh, he will remember those who are um, uh, th- those who have uh, lived for him those who have been good those who have uh, committed themselves to his relationship and he will give the consequences for those who have rejected him and that's what the psalmist found out in psalm 73 Ah, is God a moral God when he uh, when he contravenes his own rules? And so um, that's that, that that's a good question. I think uh, you know I'd like to ask him that question myself. <laughs> Because okay, so why 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 is there why is there death? But again, when I look at scripture, this is what this is what I see. Death entered the world. Death was never supposed to be a part of of uh, of of our world. Um, and so death entered the world as a result of ourselves. And so even what we see uh, happening, the death that goes on, uh, the killing that, that goes on, um, even in the name of God, all of that is part of our human brokenness. Uh, it, is, it is a consequence of our sinfulness as human, being, uh, as human beings. But then let me, let me also go on and say that even in spite of that, I think it's important for us to understand that God is absolutely good, he's absolutely moral. In fact, it is against God that we, we measure our own morality. Uh, it's a bit presumptuous of myself to think that I can determine whether God is moral or immoral. He's the standard, and he's the one who creates that standard for myself, for, for us all. I like that one. <laughs> so, so does... Um, Does, does my, my uh, the way I live, my commitment to God, my prayer, if I pray more, am I going to get more blessed? Uh, if I pray less, I'm going to get disease, I'm going to get, you know, less blessed. Uh, here's my question. Here's my, my, my response to that. Uh, the answer to that question is actually, no. Um, God doesn't work on those metrics. First of all, there's a question of, there's the question of what do we mean by blessed? Many times, you know, as pastors, uh, some of us have misled you. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Some pastors like me have stood before you and have said uh, that being blessed is having, you know, that kind of car, living in that address and all of that. That is not blessing. Blessing, if you look at the life of, jo- uh, of Joseph, if you look at the life of Moses, every time God says that he has blessed someone, yeah, there might be some material things sometimes and sometimes not. But blessing really means being in communion and in relationship with God. That's what real blessing is. And so praying more, learning about God more, being, being in tune God, with God more, act, does lead to that kind of blessing, uh, but will not necessarily lead to having that bigger car, uh, four by four, uh, not contribute to the one, two, three, four, five, six, one spouse, uh, two children, uh, what is it, three bedroom house in that address and, uh, you know, four wheel drive car, um, I don't know, five acre plot of land and a six figure salary in euros. Um, it, it doesn't always agree. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I would say, does God use the devil? I would say, uh, 
sometimes God will allow circumstances where the consequences will come upon us and the consequences might come upon us through the devil. Um, and it's not because God intends for it, but it is a part of the broken nature uh, of, of our existence. And also, it is a part of um, the, the part of his image that he has given us, and that is that of, of making, uh, of being able to choose God or to choose um, uh, the, the alternative. And sometimes the alternative is either ourselves, sometimes the alternative is schemes of the enemy. And God will sometimes allow us to fall into the hands uh, of, of Satan, sometimes even fall into our own hands, you know, and, and, and there are consequences uh, upon us. Um, and so I guess if, if you don't obey the traffic rules and I don't know, you drink and drive and get drunk and you drive along the road and it might not matter how much you pray, the chances are that you may get an accident, uh, you know, and that's just how the world is structured. And so there might be consequences and some of those consequences might come upon you um, as you know, part of what the enemy will try and do to you or Satan will try to do to you. God created the earth in seven days. Actually, six days. <laughs> and then he rested on the seven and said, man, this thing is really so good. And all of the human existence, you know, came, uh, all of existence really, you know, happened uh, in such a short time. Why is it going to take, I don't know, six months to pray for my friend who's, you know, um, you know, suffering with a particular illness? Why, you know, have some of my friends prayed for, I don't know, a year, two years, five years for God to give them a child? He can do it. He just needs to say, to, to say it. You know, some of those answers we never really know because uh, God interacts with us on a very personal basis. Uh, sometimes God's answer will be uh, yes, immediately. Sometimes God's answer will be uh, wait. Sometimes God's answer is no. And that's very hard for me when I think that this thing that I'm praying for is what, is what I should get. And, um, and we, I think if we, if, if we be, want to believe God to be God, then we must allow him the ability to answer prayers according to him as God. Um, what I found also again from my own life is that sometimes when some of my prayers get answered, it ends up not being a very good thing for me. Um, and so sometimes you, you know, God wants us to wait, and when we wait, then things fall in, in their own in their own timing. Uh, but it's difficult to know what the specific answers are. But but um, I think my attitude usually is. Um, as I look at scripture, I see, you know, people, you know, people like Mary, I see people like, uh, like Joseph, I see people like Zechariah, um, and, and I see people even in the Old Testament. And sometimes, um, you know, it seems to me that the best thing to do is to wait for God's timing and let God be God and Kiyama be Kiyama. Yeah, so if, 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 if God is this loving God who loves us, creating us the capacity to enjoy things, the capacity to have, uh, to have fun, the capacity to um, enjoy relationship, enjoy entertainment, and I don't know, you know, go out into the ocean, swim, um, why would then be the, there a possibility of jellyfish that can sting you? Or if you're in Cape Town, uh, you know, swimming out there, you know, a shark, <laughs> you know, and things like those. Um, why would God do that? I think I think the answer for to that question needs to we need to understand everything in perspective. I think there's there are spaces every once in a while God will allow us to recognize that His creation in totality um, we cannot interact with it just the way we want. Um, and so, you know, even as we interact, as we get in there and enjoy the ocean, we've got to understand that part of God's greatness is creating some of the stuff that is inside there that could be, um, you know, that could be detrimental uh, for us. And so a part of that, I think for me, as I look at it, a part of that is just understanding God's sovereignty in creating so many different things. Um, you know, another question that, that you might be asking, okay, so why, if, if God would create, um, you know, pleasurable experiences. For example, you know, like uh, human sexual intercourse. Why, why would then he, he limit it? 
um, he would limit it again for the same reason, that he's sovereign and he chooses for us that there are certain spaces in which we enjoy the things that he has prepared for us. And sometimes when we go outside of those boundaries, then there's a consequence uh, to us.